June 22nd, 2018. Well, uh, we've presented another excellent opportunity to discuss trace mineral nutrition, true plant health, uh, specifically as it relates to calcium and also as it relates to critical points of influence and the earliest critical points of influence and the effects that we can have uh, addressing mineral nutrition, uh, addressing mineral nutrition, <laughs> addressing mineral nutrition correctly. Pardon me, it's been one of those days. Um, so I want to point out, uh, well first of all I should say that these are two different pepper varieties, okay, so you can take that into account if you like, um, but they have been treated differently from the beginning. These peppers, uh, to the left of the steak here, are hot cherry peppers and they were started by a local commercial greenhouse and I know that they're not organic so I know that they were using chemical ferts and nutrients and in doing so I'm quite sure that they used a lot more nitrogen than was necessary and not enough calcium and so what happens when you don't have enough calcium present is you don't build really strong cell walls and when you don't build really strong cell walls it shows in the plant throughout the rest of the growing season because you don't have strong cell walls to resist pathogens and you don't have uh, strong stems that uphold plants upright correctly so this is an excellent example of the difference between starting plants in appropriate trace mineral nutrition and not overdoing it on nitrogen and instead making sure that there's plenty of calcium present versus plants that weren't put through that process. So these hot cherry peppers, as you look down this row, you can see that these have all fallen over since I planted them. And you can see that there's a lot of new growth coming on them now. They've had several foliar feeds. They've really been uh, treated well since I got a hold of them. Um, but every one of these plants, when I first planted it, and I set them to correct depth, and I pressed them incorrectly, fell over. And not you'll notice that the soil didn't fall over, the base of the plant, but rather the stem itself actually fell over. Because the stem couldn't support that, even that small plant couldn't support its weight. <clears throat> and so the difference in contrast here are these jalapeno peppers. These, I started under the trace mineral nutrition, and yes, a few of them have been bumped over from working around them. But I started these under trace mineral nutrition. Uh, I addressed good biology, uh, inoculated all the flats right off the bat. Um, I did not put any chemical fertilizers on at all. Uh, and I instead uh, put some trace mineral nutrition on and um, what I would usually use for a foliar feed, but at a light dosing uh, in addition to the coast of Maine potting soil that these were started in. So these had good uh, fungal biology as well as bacterial biology, a complete trace mineral and hormonal nutritional support right from the start. And so you can see the difference in these plants since transplant. Um, they're all standing upright. Uh, pretty much every one of them is standing upright on its own and it hasn't fallen over uh, like some of those other plants down there they were started under chemical fertilizers. So this is an excellent example of the difference between uh, building your plant, your plant cell walls from calcium or building them from whatever you have available because you've got too much nitrogen in it. Um, I probably have not described that as well as I could, uh, but uh, you should probably check out Advancing Eco Agriculture and uh, specifically a man named John Kempf he discusses uh, using calcium and appropriate trace mineral nutrition to build cell walls better. But um, you'll notice that this is a great example of early... I got a yellow jacket flying around me. A great example of early critical points of, nutri uh, critical points of influence uh, being affected right from the very start. These were started from seed in my greenhouse and uh, you can see they're all doing well. And you see there's two stages here too. Uh, these are the earlier ones. I uh, started out in single f in flats with single cells, and the chipmunks dug a lot of those up. So there's only a few survivors here of that. And then the second batch, I just poured the seeds on the flat and loaded it up, um, and transplanted them out by hand. Uh, but anyway, so that's a fantastic example of uh, critical points of influence, and we'll track these throughout the season as well. And I'm sure you'll see as the season goes on that these are extremely extremely productive and healthy plants. And uh, I'll bet we even see a difference. I wish, I wish I had some. Uh, wish I had started some under chemical newts actually, just to compare. But uh, we'll be able to see uh, 
the difference in yield and flower and fruit set and all that on these versus the cherries. Even though they're different varieties, it'll give you a pretty good idea. But uh, I just wanted to discuss that briefly. I noticed it when I was out here having a cup of coffee watching the sunset last night. And uh, I thought I should bring it to your attention because it's a, a critical point. And uh, it has a lot of influence. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.